Hello, today I'm going to show how I made these pumpkin mini loaf gift boxes and these are a really fun way to give pumpkin bread or any kind of um, quick bread throughout the whole holiday season. I used um, a couple different kinds of dies and stamps and I'll go through both um, briefly. In fact, there, there's just a couple of differences between the two but the main way to make them is the same. You start off with a seven and a half by ten and score at 2.25 inches all the way around. And I've got a downloadable sheet for you and um, on my blog as well with all of the dimensions that you need here. So um, don't panic on all the different dimensions that you hear. These are the little flaps that get the scalloped edges, the box lid, and I scored those at a half inch. So they're basically one inch wide and then I scored them at a half. I needed to cut some slits on the short ends here and I wanted them to be in the perfect same plane as each other so that the box would not be crooked when glued together. So I just put it down on my uh, cutter so that I could ensure that it was just perfectly cut in the same um, line all the way across. And I did that for both sides. Next for the little scalloped box tops, I just taped um, the cutting edge to the edge of the box top, ran it through the die cutter and did that for all four sides. For the harvest pumpkin there was a wood grain and so I embossed a wood grain onto the uh, four panels. I'm gluing the base panels down uh, before I assemble the box so that I can lay it under some weight to dry before I fold it up. And I started off using the base color and it's kind of a shimmery, rusty color. Um, it doesn't really show its true glimmer here, but it's very, um, very sparkly. Now with the wood, I did use glue for both of these because they're both thick and the glue is not gonna show through. And so I just wanted a really good adhesion especially to those corners you don't want those corners coming up um, in the box at all you want a nice tight fit used a dictionary um, for some weight to dry and once that was nice and dry and flat I went ahead and scored everything and then I glued the outside of each flap as shown and then you just simply fold them in they adhere to each other and then because they both have glue, they adhere to the outside of the box. And I paid attention to where the uh, sides meet here, and they just lined up perfect because those slits are lined up perfect. Um, so that really helps the box to come together nicely. So here I am doing that to the other side, and it just couldn't be easier. Once the box was put together, I could immediately put the little box flaps on. And I started just by scoring them so they had a nice uh, crisp fold there and then glued the inside portion um, to the box. So, so far, uh, the procedures are the same for the two boxes. Um, outside of the wood paneling, which you could put a wood paneling on the Halloween box if you wanted to. I used the Harvest Pumpkin with the pumpkin swirl outline on it and I wanted to add just a little bit of kind of a shading, not much for color, um, but just, just a little bit of shading to help it stand out against that box. And the, um, the pumpkin swirl, the little outlines that I used are that sparkly rust color to match the background. And I was amazed. You guys will have to try this um, to see for yourself, but I put one layer of the um, outlines on and it makes such a difference to add a second. Um, as you guys know, if you watch my videos, I'm on kind of a double layer kick lately, but there's a reason and it's just, um, it just makes all the difference. So I did use two layers each on um, those pumpkins. Now here's one where I cut out the little lines and just saved the outline. This is going to be my little pumpkin bread tag. I just wrote pumpkin bread on there and then glued the outline um, to that pumpkin. And I only put one layer there. Then I attached an eyelet to the center and I started off just by marking where I wanted that to be. And then I used my little eyelet tool to punch a hole and then I inserted the eyelet. I didn't put a tag on the Halloween one, just the uh, 
harvest uh, pumpkin. And then I went over it with a little bit of the Spectrum Noir, the crystal clear glitter pen. And I just went over the top of the pumpkin. Next, and this is the same for both boxes, I used collages. And I used the Oak Leaf Oval Collage and the Creepy Forest. I did the same thing with both. So I cut out several of the intact collages. And then I, um, I shaded the one for the harvest. And I just used, I cut them and used them and pieced them together based on what looked good. And really, there was no rhyme or reason to it. Um, I just had fun and just put them together. Now with the Halloween box, I did have a um, little zigzag. Uh, I had my pinking shears out and made a little border, but this, because it's all kind of the same color for the harvest box, I didn't need to. I did um, wrap it around the edges. I kept going with the little vine and then I um, added more leaves. And then with the stitched pumpkin leaves, there's some cute little swirls. I cut those out of that sparkly rust paper and just um, added some little swirls and they kind of bent around the corner and then went bo both directions. And I decorated all four sides so they all um, were kind of mirror images of each other. Next I attached the little tag to a bow and then I just assembled kind of a, oh, a ribbon that matched the rust color. And I put that underneath um, some leaves. All of this is at Joann's right now in the Thanksgiving aisle. They have some gorgeous ribbons right now. So there's the Harvest Pumpkin box. And I wound up going ahead and just kind of distressing the edges a little bit. And I wanted to show you this flower I made because I'm going to put a link to how to do this at the bottom. This was um, on a video I saw and it was just so much fun to make. The original plan was to use that as the topper, but I used a bow instead. Okay, so just a few quick little differences between the boxes. You'll see me here stenciling onto the background just for, you know, something kind of interesting back there rather than purple. And then I used the collage, just like I said, cut out a bunch, pieced them together. And here's that little um, pinking shears strip that I would attach down at the bottom. Now on the sides, that little collage fits perfectly. And so I just uh, die cut one for each end and then I just glued them on. And then I made that little pinking shear strip um, just for a little border along the bottom. So I'm gonna show how I colored one of the kittens. I did the same thing on all of them, uh, same technique. I used distress markers. And since I'm gonna be making a lot of these, I just wanted something that looked really good that was simple at the same time. And this was definitely, I, I think that looks great and it was super easy. So I just colored it in and then I daubed water and I, I really let that water pool. And then I had a little paper towel and I just blotted it up. Now you'll see the first time I didn't put as much water. And so the blotting does take up some of the color, but wait until you see me use the brush. See, it's already lifting. And it just um, is such a unique, fun, cool look. The Happy Halloween is a um, word die, of course, and it just lays flat. There's a little bar along the bottom, and I glued that little bar. I doubled up on the layers here, and I glued the little bar onto the box and let that dry really, really well before I even touched it so that it would be nice and stiff because I'm gonna bend all those little letters up. So while that was drying, I made the little spider that sits on top of the um, Halloween box and I just wrapped tulle around my fingers and then um, tied one knot pretty tight. And then I cut each side of the loops. You can make these little poof balls um, perfectly round if you want. I didn't make mine perfectly round, but I definitely shaped it more than um, what it originally looked like. And so you'll see me here just cutting it and then fluffing it and then cutting it some more. You just keep working with it. And I used a little pom-pom for the head, and so I attached the pom-pom with um, a glue gun. And it does not attach perfectly because, I mean, you're attaching to a bunch of little pieces there. But it does sit, and it, it does, um, it is stable. It's, it's good. So um, you just, again, you just work it in, and, and it'll find its little place and, and stay there. And then for the little legs, I used pipe cleaners. 
and cut little strips, put them together, and then um, and then put one piece in the center and just wrapped them together. And so that made his little legs. Hot glued the body to the legs. And then I put little Google eyes onto the little pom pom. Once the Happy Halloween was dry, I went ahead and flipped the little letters up. Once again, these are double layer. It wouldn't hurt to do a triple on this. These are okay and they work fine, but on my next one, I, it will be a triple layer. The actual loaves were wrapped in food wrap and then I put tissue paper over this one. And then a matching bow and the spider was on top. And so there is the little Halloween with the feline spooky um, stamp set from Poppy Stamps new fall release. And it is super cute and a super fun project. I hope you try it and these are super easy. I made them with the efficiency of making many in mind and I hope you have a great day and we'll see you again soon.